Right now, the snow is here and there's more on the way for tomorrow. We're asking Madison Streets crews about the potential for a declared snow emergency and how that'll affect parking on the Isthmus. And law enforcement in Janesville looking for an armed and dangerous person in a mobile home park. We are live from the scene with the very latest. Plus, students in Sauk and Baraboo will undergo testing for tuberculosis after one person in the area could have been exposed to the disease. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. And thanks for joining us tonight. We have team coverage tonight of the winter storm that's moving into our area. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has a look at the latest radar data. And Dana Fulton is out on the weather patio to share what we are seeing outside right now. But we're going to start with Gary in the weather center. Charlotte, the snow and freezing rain are starting to spread into southwestern Wisconsin as we speak, uh, just starting here in the Madison area, and it's overspreading much of the southern part of the state. Some of this is in the form of snow. Some of it, especially south of Madison, is in the form of some freezing rain or even a little bit of sleet. Notice the visibility is starting to drop, an indication that the precipitation is reaching the ground. Temperatures are critical. Janesville still above freezing at 34, so they're likely seeing rain or a mix of rain and snow, but elsewhere temperatures are just below freezing for the most part. That means freezing rain and snow. Winter storm warning in effect for Dane County in areas to the south and east through 6 a.m. Sunday morning, north and west of Dane County, winter weather advisory. Tonight we're looking at about one to three inches of snow over southwestern Wisconsin, the heaviest amounts uh, perhaps down toward Grant County, but there also could be some ice accumulations of up to a quarter of an inch, and that will set up a pretty uh, nasty glaze if it does occur down near the Illinois state line. Then the second part of the storm hits us tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night with a possibility for several inches of snow north and west of Madison and a heavy snow from Madison on toward the south and east. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will be in the lower 20s. We'll see a bit of a break tomorrow morning and then the snow redeveloping tomorrow afternoon with a high temperature of 27 degrees. Now, is the snow or the freezing rain reaching the ground? Well, we have Dana Fulton out on the backyard patio to give us an idea. Dana? Yes, so I had to grab the umbrella right now. It's actually raining uh, pretty significantly out here on the patio right now. We have some pretty light rainfall, but this is going to quickly transition over to snow. As you just saw on the radar, that line between the snow and the freezing rain just slicing right through south of Madison right now. Once it starts to transition over to snow, we're really going to see impacts of that accumulation. It'll be clearing time for your Saturday. Plan ahead for a little extra time to make sure the driveway and the sidewalks are clear. But even this light rain or in some cases some freezing grade it's going to lead to some slick road conditions so major impacts for your driving and just walking around as we look ahead to your weekend those impact zones really stretch throughout most of southern wisconsin dane county included in that we're expecting a little less of an impact areas far north and west towards La Crosse. but for your weekend definitely plan ahead Make sure, sure you give yourself plenty of time on the road. So there's our impact zones at deep dark blue, again, including all of Dane County and Rock County as the snow does start to come through tonight and for Saturday night. It's going to lead to some messy road conditions, but we're going to keep a close eye on this precipitation as it does slide through right now. Again, rain for us on the southern side of Madison. This is going to quickly transition over to snow. We'll keep a close eye on that as it does do so. Dana, thank you. Many cities around the area have already declared snow emergencies for this weekend, but Madison is not one of them yet. But once we get three inches of snow on the ground, a snow emergency will likely be declared. And that means we all need to think about where we'll park without getting a ticket overnight. Jamie Perez joins us live in the snow emergency zone on the Isthmus tonight. Jamie, what did you find out about parking in that area? So the rules in Madison are kind of confusing because it really just depends on where you live. But a good rule of thumb to follow is just pay attention to all the street signs to know when and where you can park. So hopefully that when you wake up in the morning, you won't wake up to a parking ticket. Even people who have lived in Wisconsin forever can forget the parking rules during a winter storm. There's been a couple times where I've just paid a ticket next day. Got another one. Miles McNaughton is just like a lot of us. I can't tell you how many times that people have walked back in and been like, I got another ticket. The rules in Madison during a snowstorm can be a bit tricky if you aren't keeping tabs. I would just say in general in the winter, if it's going to be snowing, if you're following alternate site parking rules, you're doing the right thing. Brian Johnson with the city of Madison said it's best to look at the area in two parts. The snow emergency zone in red and the non-snow emergency zone, which is everything else not in red. If you live in the red area, you only have to use alternate side street parking when a snow no emergency is declared, which hasn't happened just yet for Madison. I would suspect possibly the declar declaration might happen sometime Saturday to go in effect that evening, but 
stay tuned for that, really, basically, because we have to wait for the, what the storm arrives before we make any sort of really big announcements about this. But for people like McNaughton, the rules are often overlooked, and the city is making some extra bucks off the people who aren't paying attention. Yes, they are. For all of you that are unsure, did you know that you can park for free during a snow emergency in a city parking ramp? No, I did not know that. Might have avoided him a couple of those parking That's tickets. <laughs> For those that are still confused. People within the snow emergency zone also have a once a week, four hour parking restriction that they have to follow. Like for example, no parking eight to noon on Monday. So there's street cleaning, there's alternate side parking. And it's just like, there's so many like specific signs that tell you Wednesday, Friday, Thursday. Your best bet is to read all the signs to avoid getting those parking tickets that McNaughton has become all too familiar with. I see the people, especially like in the morning, people who don't move and I'm like, you got a ticket. Just make sure you triple check and plan ahead. The alternate site parking rules are only enforced between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. So there's a little bit of planning ahead that you have to do. You can sign up for free alerts through the City of Madison's website to know if and when a snow emergency is declared this morning. Also, if you head over to channel3000.com right now, I have put together a list of all the places, not Madison, that have declared snow emergencies and what the parking rules are for all of those areas. So be sure to keep up to date this weekend. Some important information. Jamie Perez, live downtown. Jamie, thank you. So due to extreme weather conditions, emergency shelters will welcome anyone who needs a place to stay despite their capacity limits. Tonight, the Salvation Army's Family Shelter, Women's Shelter and Porch Lights Men's Drop-In Shelter will all be open. The shelters are ready with warm winter items, including socks, hats, gloves and blankets. We do not turn people away for capacity issues. Um, and at this time of year, nobody would be out of days. But even if somebody had been suspended from services with the cold weather and with the storm, we have weather exception nights. And so everybody is welcome to come in. Porchlight has already seen a season high of 148 people. For comparison, they saw 170 people during the extremely cold temperatures last year. And we will continue to track the snowstorm and have the latest updates on News 3 Now and Channel3000.com. A reminder that our free First Alert weather and traffic app has live radar and traffic to show how the snow will impact you wherever you may be. Officers in Janesville have called off their search for an armed and dangerous person for the night. They were searching for a suspect wanted on drug charges at the Rockvale Mobile Home Park. Adam Duxter has the latest on where the investigation stands and how you can help. Adam. Eric and Charlotte, it's dark now and with, smoke, with snow moving in on the way in just a few hours, all of the law enforcement officers that were once here earlier today have cleared off their search for tonight. Now, earlier today, I talked to Rock County Sheriff Troy Knudsen, who said that the sheriff's office still will leave a handful of deputies in the area, but the darkness has made it so their canines and drones were no longer able to help with this search. Now, the man they're looking for is described as a black male who is six foot one and 270 pounds. Despite the search being called off for tonight, the sheriff's office is asking everyone in this area to remain vigilant. Quickest way to get the information to us, if you see something suspicious, somebody matching that description down in this area, 757-2244. That's 608-757-2244. That's the information line going to 911. Now, this search started around 1.30 this afternoon when the Department of Criminal Investigations tried to pull over this individual. And that's when they say he got out of his vehicle and started to run. And again, with the sun down now and freezing rain and snow on the way in the next few hours, they say he could be anywhere in the area. So again, they're asking everyone in this area to stay on the lookout. Adam, thank you. And we'll continue to follow this story in Janesville. And you can find the latest updates on the Channel 3000 app. Governor Tony Evers has approved a member of the Georgia National Guard to help Wisconsin sexual assault and misconduct survivors. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Bischoff will provide quarterly reports to the governor. Governor Evers created the Sexual Misconduct Ombudsman Program in December after federal investigators issued a report revealing multiple issues with the Wisconsin Guard's sexual misconduct reporting protocols. New at six schools in Baraboo and Sauk Prairie are gearing up to test some students and staff for tuberculosis next week. This comes after a person who who had contact at the schools had a positive test come back. Amy Reed joins us now to share why health officials say they don't think students are infected. 
The Sauk County Health Department said these tests, which will be at no cost, are out of an abundance of caution. Still, for parents who heard this news today, this is scary. The woman we spoke to said she wasn't waiting for the free test. She took her kid to the doctor today. Just saying that um, my son had a possible exposure to TB, which is very, very scary to hear as a parent. When Heidi Hookstra heard the news from her son's school nurse, she worried not just for her six-year-old, but for her other kids at home, too. They didn't say how big of a risk it was, um, anything like that. Just said, you know, your son has been exposed. There's other, you know, there's other people as well, and we're not the only one. Sauk County Health Department said they had to contact about 50 people to let them know they might have been exposed to someone with tuberculosis, some at schools in Baraboo and Sauk Prairie districts. But Director Tim Lother said they are only being cautious. The likelihood of, ex of, of any of these children or staff folks or anybody else catching the disease from this person is very, very low. But out of an abundance of caution, we thought it was good to make sure that we tested just to make sure. Lothar said the reason it's so low is because they aren't sure the initial person is sick. One test came back positive, two came back negative. A confirmation test will take six to eight weeks. This person has also not shown any symptoms. There are experts out there who would suggest we don't really need to be testing as extensively as we will. Um, but we've decided in order to be safe and in order to alleviate concerns of parents um, that we will we will conduct this level of testing. For Heidi, safety is what it's all about. Well, hopefully everybody gets the news that they want to hear and this can all go away. After the initial round of testing next week, the health department is paying to have another round of testing done in about eight to 10 weeks. Again, they don't expect there to be any cases, but said you can keep an eye out for unusual symptoms like coughing, blood in your cough and night sweats or chills, and then call your doctor if you're worried. All right, Amy, thank you very much. Next at six, the Packers have called for shoveling help ahead of the playoff game with the Seahawks. And Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes is making some cheesy bets that the green and gold will win. We'll explain coming up. Today is the one-year anniversary of Barentine Jamie Kloss escaping from her captor. Kloss was abducted by Jake Patterson, who murdered her parents. He held her captive for almost three months until the day she broke free, running into a woman out walking her dog who helped her to safety. Patterson is serving two life sentences for the murder of James and Denise Kloss and a 40-year sentence for kidnapping Jamie. The story made national headlines and Jamie was honored at the state capitol as a hometown hero. State Representative Romaine Quinn of Barron presented the award and said Jamie was an inspiration. And you taught us an important lesson. 
No matter how great your situation, no matter how dark your days become, and no matter how impossible your circumstances may seem, there is always hope. Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes is accepting a challenge from Washington's Lieutenant Governor ahead of the Packers Seahawks playoff game this weekend. In a tweet, the Lieutenant Governor Barnes says he is betting some Wisconsin cheese, cheese curds, meat sticks, and beer that the Packers will win. He says, unlike 2015 when the Packers lost the NFC title game 28 to 22 to the Seahawks, it's a new day and a new administration. And Kevin Lewis will have a preview of the game coming up a little later in sports. Just had snow moving into our area and we're getting a second round tomorrow. Gary will have details on how much snow we can expect and how it may impact any of your travel plans. That's coming up next. For consistent, reliable storm tracking, watch First Alert Weather. Well, precipitation is starting to break out across southern Wisconsin. Morgan Ring in uh, Mount Horeb sent us this picture. That's a little bit of sleet and snow on their backyard deck. And three things you need to know in the forecast. Not only will we be looking at some overnight snow with about one to three inches through much of southern Wisconsin, there's also the potential for freezing rain up to about a quarter of an inch south of Dane County. That's a pretty significant ice accumulation. And then we have a round of heavy, moderate to heavy snow from tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night through much of southern Wisconsin. High resolution Doppler radar shows the precipitation breaking out pretty rapidly. You can kind of tell about where that freezing rain snow line is, right? Just to the south of Madison. A lot of this is freezing rain, even a little bit of rain down toward the Illinois state line where temperatures are just above freezing. In fact, as we widen out the view on Doppler track, you can see this precipitation extends back to the west, down to the south, a lot of rain through parts of Illinois, and that will change the snow and freezing rain as it lifts into the colder air. Alert days are in the forecast for tonight for that snow and freezing rain potential, and then for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night for the heavier snow potential. And then on Sunday, we kept the alert day in the forecast just because roads are going to be 
pretty uh, bad, at least in the morning hours until uh, things start to clear out. You can see winter storm warnings in effect for southern and eastern Wisconsin, as well as parts of northern Illinois back into Iowa. The first round of snow, about one to three inches. There might be some slightly higher totals from uh, just west of Madison back into parts of central Iowa. Then we have the freezing rain potential with maybe up to a quarter of an inch of ice accumulation uh, south of the Illinois, or around, right around the Illinois state line, and areas of the south could see as much as a half inch of ice accumulation. And then as we look at the snow for uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, heaviest snow will probably fall just south and east of Madison with an additional four to eight inches, maybe locally nine inches in a few spots. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. The haziness shows that we're starting to get some of that snow and freezing rain reaching the ground. High today, 40, the low 28. Right now, the critical number is the temperature. We're at 30 degrees with light freezing rain being reported at the airport. Winds are out of the north at tw uh, 12 miles per hour. Our wind chill is at 21. Temperatures are just below freezing, just basically just south of Madison. So that's kind of the dividing line between the freezing rain and snow to the north and freezing and uh, snow and rain to the south. But as this precipitation lifts northward, we're on the northern edge of a very strong storm system. Just uh, north and east of Springfield, Missouri right now in uh, near Marshfield, Missouri, they're under a tornado warning and they have a winter weather advisory for tonight and tomorrow. That shows you just how quickly the situation will change. Severe weather a possibility on the southern side of the storm, snow and freezing rain on our side. We're north of the stationary front that divides temperatures that are in the 50s and 60s to temperatures that are already below zero up near the U.S.-Canadian border. So our forecast calls for that winter storm warning in effect until 6 a.m. Sunday morning for Dane County, areas to the south and east. Winter weather advisories to the north and west. Look for snow, maybe mixed with some freezing rain, especially south of Madison, low at 22. Tomorrow, a break for the morning and early afternoon, then snow redeveloping later in the, in the day. High temperature at 27, and that snow could become heavy tomorrow night. On future track, you can see the precipitation moving through. That's midnight tonight, maybe even a little bit of rain if temperatures stay just above freezing down to the south. But then that ends early tomorrow morning. The next round of snow arrives tomorrow afternoon, continues into tomorrow night, and then winds down pretty quickly by Sunday morning. But again, because of the, the heaviness of the snow, roads will probably still be in pretty poor shape Sunday morning. And then on Sunday, just maybe a few flurries in the afternoon. One to three inches of snow through much of southern Wisconsin. Snow uh, Ice accumulations up to a quarter of an inch down to the south. And then the second batch of snow bringing heavy snow south and east of Madison late in the day tomorrow. As we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, some accumulating snow chances Tuesday and Wednesday. And then again, Friday night of next week. We'll be right back.
If there's a way to quietly tie for the league lead in touchdowns, Packers running back Aaron Jones found a way to do it. The third year back became the first Packer to rush for 1,000 yards since 2014. He also caught 49 passes. And Jones said he's just trying to do his 1-11th within the offense. He said practice has been spirited this week. There's no worry of bad weather, getting off to a slow start following a bye week, or knowing what's at stake Sunday nights. Just never too high, never too low. Uh, same thing is up throughout the season, and uh, I feel like that's something we've done really well at, and we played in playoff-type atmospheres down the stretch and uh, the, the late stretch of the game. So uh, I feel like it's something we're ready for, and um, I'm ready for as well. Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson is known for doing his homework when he pre prepares for opponents. Now he's making sure his teammates are doing theirs. He's been handing out 15-page quiz, scouting report, assignment things to every player on the offense. Wilson says it's pretty detailed, and it includes everything from game-specific items to random facts. Professor Wilson said he's always looking over the scouting report, and he needs everyone else, especially the young players, to get on his level. This year in particular, especially because we've had a lot of young receivers and young, young guys, just to really be able to make sure that they're, you know, uh, on their stuff. And you got to respect the process along the journey and what it takes to study, what it takes to prepare. They're going to challenge us at the line. Uh, they play a lot of man, uh, and they're, they're pretty much experienced on the back end. Uh, the D line is pretty good. So, I mean, it's going to be a, a good matchup for us. There's no Paul Bunyan's axe or traveling wrestling trophy for the Wisconsin border battle with Minnesota, but there's nothing lacking when it comes to the rivalry. The ninth ranked Badgers tangle with number four Minnesota tonight at 8 o'clock on Big Ten Network. Now, the Big Ten's the best conference in the country. Badgers head coach Chris Bonos put his team through a meat grinder so far this season, and there will be no time off as they get ready for three straight top ten teams. I wish we could take that axe with us up there and, 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 uh, <laughs> and parade it around for, for the duel. But, um, no, it's Minnesota. It's, it's a heck of a rivalry. Um, they've got a great program. You know, they're down here stealing our recruits. Um, we're up there stealing theirs. There's, there's a lot more that goes into this match. We want to win this one real bad. Um, our guys want to win this one real bad. So it'll, um, I think it's going to be very exciting. Chris Bryant will be a Cub next season. The team avoided arbitration and signed the third baseman to a one-year deal worth 18.6 million bucks. 28-year-olds, a former Rookie of the Year and NL MVP, hit 282 with 31 homers this past season, likely to become a free agent after the 2021 season. Isaiah Hartenstein, meet Chris Paul. Paul dribbling down the left side, and he goes through the legs of the big man and then hits the floater. On the playground, you just have to leave. That happened to you at CP3 afterwards, like, shut it down, can't get any better than that. And see, that's my lack of height helped me in basketball because no one could do that. I couldn't do either one. Yeah, yeah I could, yeah. I would be yeah, either. Yeah, just go straight through. So, yes, Chris Paul doing that's why he gets paid all the big money. All right, Gary, Chris Bryant, there's some good news for you today. On that's if he doesn't get you. traded. Uh, I don't have enough time to talk about sports. Let's look at weather. There's the snow, freezing rain moving through much of southern Wisconsin. Mainly freezing rain south of Dane County, snow north and west of Dane County, and temperatures are very critical right at the or just below the freezing mark through much of southern Wisconsin. Madison's at 30 right now, and we're getting some light freezing rain being reported at the airport. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.